think of something that might be useful to other people and you can make it real and you can ask people what they think about it and you can get help and you can uh, work with other people to make something really cool and like that you can make. Also, that you make anything you want, and there's challenges, you know, and prizes, and that you get to create different things. I like the fact that people can make whatever they want, it's their idea, and you have all kinds of cool stuff that you can make stuff with, and it lets you do it. I like how we can make our own video games, and how we can make our own things off of a 3D printer. Have you done Any inventions that you might have, or something that maybe someone hasn't made before, but I think would be a good idea to make. Uh, I like how you're able to be as creative as you want, and you get to, like, instead of following a set of directions, you can do your, your own idea. So my name is Andrew Gooden. I'm the Makerspace Facilitator here at Grand Center Arts Academy, and I'm pretty sure that I have the best job in the world. I get to help students be creative with their own ideas. So the Makerspace is not a scheduled class, it's a drop-in, sort of a library model. Students can come in starting before school at 7 a.m. Many parents will say to me, 7 a.m., you expect my son or daughter to get up at 7 a.m.? Well, surprisingly, there are kids knocking on our door at 7 a.m. to come into the Makerspace. The Makerspace is a place for students to be creative with high-tech and low-tech tools. So we've got a class set of laptops, 10 iPads, a 3D printer, a bunch of high-tech stuff, but then we've also got a bunch of recycled materials, and students have been able to do some pretty incredible things with both. Like some string or something. Oh, like a jewelry stand? Like a jewelry box. This one is jewelry box. Attach it all like an actual box. Like make the lid and make a box that you can attach like hinges. See, that's yeah, these RC cars, especially the old-fashioned ones, are so hard to take apart. I, I, I want the motor inside. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. I want the motor. I don't want anything else. Just the motor. It was only $2 to the garage sale, so I was like, <laughs> the, the motors, the motors are what, 3 bucks? did you find? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like $2. This thing was like cheap. It was a garage sale. Of course, it was cheap. Yeah, but I think if you could get the motor out, that would be pretty cool. Okay, I think that's your key is to prime okay. out there. Yeah, I, uh, I was born in New Jersey, grew up in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and had an awesome science teacher in middle school who got me into Science Olympiad, where I was constantly making things, building things, testing things, loving science. So I went to Washington State University for college um, and studied chemistry there. Worked there on a miniature explosive detector. That's where I was doing lots of soldering and electrical, that's where most of my electrical knowledge comes from. And then taught chemistry at Soldan for five years before coming here to Grand Center Arts Academy. So Gregory Hill ran a makerspace here last year on Fridays. And I came and dropped in to see what it, uh, how it was going, what kids were doing in the makerspace. And then we, we were touring the school, walked into this room, and I said, oh my gosh, this needs to be a makerspace. There's all this natural light here for the create, natural light helps with creativity, and we need to have the makerspace here. Um, so we were able to consolidate the library to one third of this room, and then use this two thirds for the makerspace. Um, I worked with Lynn and uh, some of the other staff members, and we were able to make it happen for this year. This year has been amazing. Uh, last count in the first 10 days of school, we saw 175 students who visited 555 times. So it has been incredibly popular. Um, just yesterday, Thursday, we had our busiest day ever with 80 students coming in in one day. That's going from 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. And we're seeing some pretty incredible things. We're seeing uh, two seventh grade girls who have discovered most of simple circuits without any direct instruction from me. So. They are building a cardboard robot and they wanted this robot to have eyes that light up. And so they started with a battery and a light. And soon they realized, well, they want the light to be kind of farther away from the battery, so we're going to use some wire. 
And then they realize, well, the battery's gonna run out unless we put a switch in. So I, I put a switch on their table, didn't tell them anything about it, and they integrated it into their circuit. They left one day saying, my gosh, that was the hardest thing we've done all year. So they're really pushing themselves uh, to make these incredible things. The students are learning also that they have to be part of a community in order to be a successful yeah, maker. So they're showing each other their ideas, they're critiquing each other's ideas, and then uh, iterating upon those ideas to make them better and better. The beauty about the makerspace is that there's high-tech tinkering and low-tech tinkering. So we have students working on game design using a website called Scratch, where they're working on games and computer animations. We have students doing 3D modeling with a website called Tinkercad and then printing off on our 3D printer. But then we also have low-tech tinkering. Um, you saw today students working with cloth were our, the sewing machine that we've ordered is on back order. So right now they're just hot gluing uh, the cloth together. But What's been amazing is how they're able to still be creative given the, the obstacle of not having the correct tool. Um, we have a ton of cardboard and what I found is that cardboard is really amazing for the first prototype of something and then as they iterate upon that prototype, make it better and better each time. Uh, as a makerspace teacher, I'm definitely more of a coach. So I am coaching students and pushing them to build the best that they can to make and have a high level of creativity and show me their creativity with their products. Um, it is sometimes like a feeding frenzy in here because there's a lot of things that students are tackling that they've never experienced before. Things like circuitry, 3D printing, um, even, even just the computer skills that they're having to utilize here in a makerspace that aren't necessarily utilized in a traditional classroom. And so we do have procedures. Um, when students have a question, they ask their partner first then they ask uh, somebody who's a part of a different partnership, and then they ask me. But as you can see, sometimes that, uh, that needs work. We're working on building that procedure uh, into it. The saying of our makerspace is definitely got iterations, and it's a story that goes back to a kindergartner named Austin who needed to draw a butterfly. And this is a, a well-known story taught uh, to many educators. So Austin needed to draw this butterfly, and his first version of his butterfly was uh, definitely needed work. It was just a sketch and it was kind of off-center, things like that. Well, he iterated this five times. Each time he brought it to his teacher, his teacher said, nope, make it better, nope, make it better. And this was for a uh, project that they were going to sell these for a fundraiser. And so by the last iteration, he finally had this amazing butterfly. And this is just a kindergartner. So what I learned from Austin's butterfly iteration story is you really, if you push students, they will meet your expectations and even go far above what you expect from them. Our boxes here are modeled off of the Mythbusters warehouse. If you've ever seen the show Mythbusters, they have all these boxes and you know there's um, sports balls and wires and electronics and uh, I thought that that would be a good, just given the space we have here, I thought that would be a good arrangement for the space. It's very student friendly because the boxes are open so you can peek inside. A lot of times if students are struggling with an idea, I'll say, hey, can I hand you an item and then you make something that includes this item. Uh, as an example of that, I handed a student a toilet paper roll, cardboard toilet paper roll, and told her to make something that a kid could play with using this toilet paper roll. I figured she would maybe make something with a marble or use that as a ramp or a tunnel. She ended up making a firefly catcher, the most creative thing you could possibly think of to use a toilet paper roll for. And in her second iteration, she's attaching a light bulb to this toilet paper roll so that as you're in your backyard looking for fireflies, you can turn on the flashlight so you can make sure you don't trip over something. Pretty amazing stuff. I would love if students left the makerspace at the end of the year thinking about everything in their life from a design thinking perspective. That is approaching any obstacle, any challenge in life with this mindset of just making a minimally viable prototype and then iterating upon that prototype to make it better and better. You can do that for a resume. You can do that for applying to college. Um, it's not just making and tinkering, but the, that mindset of design thinking. One of the really nice things about the Makerspace is that parents have been bringing us their recycled materials so that we can use them to tinker. And it would be awesome if students, after having this Makerspace experience, were able to go home and, and utilize and reuse the tons of plastic that is thrown away every day. 
or um, their broken controller, if they were able to open that and hack it to make it better, that would be awesome. Is that because students are able to choose their own projects, whether these are long-term projects or projects for a day or a week, they're really putting their all into it because it's their choice. And so whereas in a, an English class where you have to get through a curriculum, here in the Makerspace, you can work as hard as you want on one project. A project might take you an entire semester or even a year. And so because of that, in the Makerspace, it's not being smart that's rewarded. It is hard work. And so as you'll see as I'm walking around, I'm really encouraging students to push themselves far harder on making their designs better. So I've, I've been a teacher for six years now, and many, many students have come to me and said, I'm not good at math. And there are many things that you do with a student who thinks that they are not good at math. Here, I'm having students tell me, I'm not creative. And so I'm thinking of this creativity challenge just like I think of the math challenge. Creativity, I believe, coming from a science background, creativity is something that can be learned if you're not from a lecture. Creativity is not something that can be learned from a lecture. It's something that's learned by engaging in opportunities and experiences that promote creativity um, and then building from there. Because our, because our makerspace is a library model where students can drop in pretty much any time throughout the day, uh, we get all kinds of students. Um, we have many students who want to come in and just brainstorm ideas and um, act on maybe one out of ten of the ideas that they brainstorm. We have students who come in and just want to work on building a skill. So they, every single time they come in, they're working on the same tool, whether it's Tinkercad, Scratch, or um, Codecademy, and just continue to get better at that skill. I can think of an example of this um, eighth grade student has been working on an HTML project, a website, for the entire duration of the Makerspace, including last year that where she first picked up HTML. Uh, we, then we have students who love doing the sort of set structured aspects of the Makerspace. So we have a weekly design challenge. This week the weekly design challenge is to design something that can keep track of time. Many ways to approach that problem, whether it's a pendulum or a sand timer or maybe a, a program built on the computer. Um, last week it was designed something that can be worn. Uh, so all kinds of students coming into the Makerspace. Before the school year started, many parents and even staff members were really confused by what a Makerspace is. And so now that we've been open for three weeks and have seen over a thousand students, I'm sure at this point, um, it's been really exciting to have these stories, these anecdotes to share with, with other people. And now as teachers are hearing these anecdotes, they're thinking, oh, how can I have my class integrate with the Makerspace? Or what can my students do in the Makerspace? So we have Mr. Thiebe who is, um, his students are coming in and working on floor plans, scale model floor plans of their bedroom. Great use of Makerspace tools to connect with science class. We go through a ton of duct tape, hot glue, index cards. Um, we just got a huge donation of construction paper today. That was awesome because we've been going through that. We've uh, just recently got donated fabric and our especially our female students have been going crazy with that building. Awesome things, um, tank tops, t-shirts, bows, um, clothing for the robot. So uh, typical junk items, markers, um, USB mice. Are these things in a budget or do you look to the community for donations to these things? We really rely on the community to provide their recycled materials for us to continue building things. And so things like cardboard, paper towel tubes, um, hot glue, duct tape would be really useful.